Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and we're here in the studio today with Dr. Alfred Bonatti, the founder and medical director of the world-renowned Bonatti Spine Institute that recently relocated, not relocated, but expanded here to Las Vegas, Nevada. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live here in the studio every Friday morning at 10 o'clock. We bring in the innovators of healthcare, those that are doing amazing things, developing new devices, bringing medical travelers here into Las Vegas, those that are involved in medical education, and just doing great things for the healthcare community right here in Las Vegas. And uh, today we've got Dr. Alfred Bonatti, who is actually fits almost all of those categories. Dr. Bonatti, welcome back to the studio. Thank you. We've had you in the studio a few times or once before in the past, and we appreciate you coming back. Thank you. So last night, you had a grand opening. You, you opened up the Bonatti Spine Institute of Las Vegas. What do you think? I think it was very crowded. <laughs> yeah, it was a very big event. Scott, if you could pull up that shot. Uh, yeah, we had about 200 folks in attendance throughout the night, and we had a lot of very, very influential people that uh, came by to stop by, welcome you into the Las Vegas marketplace. Uh, folks such as city council people, some legislators. We had even the sheriff uh, pop by to say hello, uh, the dean of the medical school. And uh, we're going to get a little bit into the details about the event later on in the show. But uh, for those of you that are that are that are new watching Inside Medicine, they may not have seen the last edition uh, where we had you on. If you could take a few minutes, tell us a little bit about the Bonatti Spine Institute and uh, your background. Well, um, the institute was developed with an idea to create a comprehensive type of medicine. So try to serve the patient that had one problem associated with the spine in total. That means uh, be able to have the diagnosis, the, uh, the imaging, the x-rays, the uh, physicians that they are going to participate and evaluate the patient, and then also to immediately be able to treat those patients. So the idea was to have a comprehensive system. Uh, worked very well in Florida. We were extremely successful for many years. Then recently we decided that it uh, would be a good idea to expand the results because we feel that the spine is a problem because there are too many answers of how to treat the spine. When you have too many answers of how to treat one problem in medicine, that means the problem is not re- really being corrected. That means is they're testing if this will be better or that will be better. Um, we developed something that is very exclusive. We have around 98.75% of patient satisfaction. That's un heard of. That's yeah. in, amazing. In a spine is amazing. Uh, and in medicine is amazing. You, If you go to a doctor, uh, even today, uh, and you ask, is this procedure going to help me? And can you guarantee that the procedure will help me? The doctors will always say, no, we cannot guarantee a procedure because the body is totally different from one person to another one. Although anatomically is equal uh, and similar, but the psychological reactions, the aging of the patient, the sex of the patient, all these things make the physician very uncomfortable to say this procedure will be successful in a 90% of possibilities. We were beyond that. We develop a procedure that is successful Almost 100%. That's amazing. Yes. And so how many of these procedures have you done over the years? Well, we we have more than 55,000 procedures performed at the Institute. So the experience of the Institute and the surgeons' experience at this facility are enormous. That's huge. We're so proud to have the Bonatti Spine Institute uh, expanding in uh, right here in, into Las Vegas. So why Las Vegas? Well, we had a 
institution in, in, in Florida that practically serve the northeast part of the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> very seldom we see people coming from Washington State or Oregon, even California, because the distance. Sure. I imagine with a back pain that nobody wants to get on a plane for five hours uh, when they're in excruciating pain. Yeah. And at the same time, they are not really very aware of their results because we don't have relationship with those states. Then it's difficult for the for the people that they are living in those states to really have information about us. Sure. So um takes takes a long time to travel, takes very much expensive to travel. Uh, and some of the people are people that they are working, so they cannot take two, three, four weeks of, uh, of uh, uh, free time to treat themselves. So we need to have an answer that will be bringing the procedure and the techniques of the Institute closer to the west side of the country so we can serve this population. That's why we select um, uh, Las Vegas. Plus, it's a great place to come. Yeah, well, we've got, uh, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of flights that come in here every day. Uh, Last week, they just announced our numbers, our tourism numbers for 2016, and I believe it was 42.9 million visitors came to Las Vegas. Almost 43 million people came here last year, which is... Unheard of. And they fly from every country in the world and every state in the union right here. So you're going to have access to that pipeline, which I think is huge. Yeah. When I was talking to you yesterday, you you said something that never never crossed my mind. You said that we practically create or develop the initial stage of... Uh, um, Touristic medicine. Medical tourism. I think yeah. you're the, the godfather of it. I, I, I look and I go, back then it wasn't called medical tourism. People were just traveling for the best care that they could find, and that was you. Yeah. 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 We, 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 we serve in that way, but I never, I never put my mind in that type of a concept till you talked to me yesterday. So the concept that you are saying that you have 40 million people coming here, if we have a good service, we will also capture some of that population because they will be they will be curious to see uh, in Las Vegas not only to come over to have an entertainment that they're looking for, but some time to seek uh, healthcare. Yeah, so uh, you know, for those folks that are new to joining the show, about uh, three years ago, we started. Well, we started on the journey about five years ago, uh, and then about three years ago, we wrote a regional strategic plan for medical tourism. Scott, if you could throw up uh, just a thumbnail of that plan. Uh, we just published uh, the two-year study or the two-year uh, accomplishment report, and a lot of that uh, is how do we position Las Vegas to become the world's most globally recognized destination for health and wellness travel. And I think uh, attracting the Bonatti Spine Institute here is a huge feather in our cap uh, for the state of Nevada. And if you look at the the plan, uh, this was co-authored by a lot of folks. Uh, we had the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, who is ultimately responsible for 42.9 million people coming here last year. Uh, The UNLV School of uh, Hotel Administration, uh, who they are developing curriculum and research around the area of medical travel. Uh, Then we also had the Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance, uh, which is looking at this as an economic development initiative. It's every time one of those uh, patients flies out here, they're on a flight, they're staying in our hotels, they're creating jobs in the area. And then the governor's office of economic development. We know Governor Sandoval is uh, very supportive of all of our medical tourism efforts. Uh, he's very proud, I'm sure, to have you in the state of Nevada and uh, attracting these people out here. So, uh, But I looked and I said, gosh, here's a guy that's been doing medical tourism since the 1980s. Uh, It wasn't even called medical tourism back then. Tell us a little bit about the population base that comes to the Florida Institute. I know they come from all the states and a lot of different countries, but touch on that a little bit if you could. Well, medicine started to change in the 1980s. A great amount of uh, corporations started to acquire hospitals and clinics, and then they shelter their their doctors on those uh, type of uh, conglomerates. So doctors in the past, they were able to relate to physicians for a referral system all over 
all over the, the, the state or all over the city. And then friendship and, and, and interaction between the physicians create a confidence. So the physician was good. Uh, the results of that physician was good. So then the doctors uh, refer the patients one to the other one in a symbiotic mechanism. But when they start to create this amount of uh, shelter institutions, uh, uh, like, for example, hospitals that they just acquired doctors, then the, the referral system change. And when the referral system change, uh, I thought and I said, I, I have the whole country. Mm -hmm. I don't need to serve Florida. I need to serve whatever can come to me. And because the product that we had at that time was initially the first birth of uh, uh, minimally invasive surgery. Now, that birth was very attractive to the people because they thought, I don't want to have an incision of six inches on my back. I really am interested to see if they can solve my problem with an incision of an, half an inch. Mm -hmm. So that was enough to attract people. And then we start to open the markets uh, by communication, by information. And then the next thing that happens is we start to receive people from all over the country and all over the world. That's amazing. Uh, somebody once told me about 80% of your patients come from outside of the Florida marketplace. That's correct. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here in Las Vegas. We've got uh, you know, 45,000 hotel rooms up and down Las Vegas Boulevard. We've got flights coming in from every country. And uh, it's going to be a matter of uh, attracting great doctors such as yourself to Las Vegas to start building all those pipelines. And we've seen a, a fair and a reasonable amount of success in the area of plastic surgery. Obviously, we've got some of the best plastic surgeons in the, the country that practice right here in Las Vegas, keeping our workforce looking good in areas of uh, fertility, areas of cancer treatment, uh, brain health with the Cleveland Clinic, and now we've got uh, spine that uh, we're attracting a lot of folks out here, and we're proud of that. Um, we're going to get back to the why. I want to find out why your procedure is so unique compared to others, but we're going to come back to that uh, later on in the show. I want to spend a little bit of time uh, taking a look at last night and uh, an event, and uh, we had our photographer sent over a bunch of photos. Here we've got the ribbon cutting, and we've got some uh, some great folks in there. It looks like you brought a lot of your team out from the uh, Florida marketplace. And again, gosh, last night I think there was a little over 200 people there, and uh, we heard nothing, nothing but amazing things. Uh, we had uh, one of the folks that was there. We had uh, Dr. Suzanne L. Aied, who is the current president of the Clark County Medical Society. Uh, so, Scott, if you could throw up a photo there, that would be wonderful. Uh, it's great that our local medical society came out to welcome you into the marketplace and uh, sent out their leadership to make sure that uh, you know that you're welcome here. We, we, we've, we're proud to have you here and uh, looking forward to, to seeing uh, your, your institute bloom and blossom. So uh, uh, next time I turned my head, I saw you talking to the dean of the UNLV School of Medicine, which was uh, good. So if you don't mind sharing, tell us a what was going on in that conversation? Well, uh, I think this uh, idea of a new university, new medical school here is brilliant. It's absolutely necessary. Uh, and if we're going to create um, doctors that they are uh, loyal to the community and loyal to the state, it needs to start in the medical school. At the same time, we need to be very sure that when we create those doctors, that they are sheltered to serve in the state. And to do that, we need to have opportunities. We need to have corporations or we need to have institutions that they are going to offer good jobs to these doctors. Otherwise, they are going to m migrate. And if you, when, once the physician migrate from the, from the state, they don't come back. Sure. So once you establish a practice, it's very difficult to move. So I, I do believe that uh, the ideas that the, the, the dean of the medical school has is not only create uh, students that they are going to become doctors, but at the same time create a type of a training programs that they are going to train already physicians that they are trained 
in different specialties. So uh, Las Vegas started to have the first quality of healthcare that deserve. Uh, one of the things that I am very enthusiastic and I discussed with her a little bit, very short, but enough to be able to, to see uh, in which direction she is thinking, is to create the fellowship for the, for the, uh, for the spine. Creating a fellowship for the spine is very important because it's going to get doctors trained in the techniques that I have uh, to that level that they are going to deliver then a tremendous amount of good results in patients that they are going to work in this area. That's awesome. And it's uh, you're always training doctors. You all, you've got surgeons down there. You're teaching them the Bonatti technique because it's different than ever, every other technique. And uh, it's great to, to watch you uh, uh, co-mingle with our dean, and hopefully we could put together a good relationship there. I think it would be a very very instrumental for Las Vegas. I think, I think it would be a good idea for, for us and for them. And you had a lot of folks up from your Florida office. You even relocated uh, relocated a couple of your your top people, right? So I know uh, Dr. John Grossmith. He's your medical director of Las Vegas. Tell us a little bit about Dr. Grossmith and how long he's been with you. Some of the credentials that he has. Dr. Grossmith is working with us for around nine years. Uh, is an, an incredible, incredible surgeon. Uh, is probably the top surgeon on the institute, and that's what I trust on him to give him the responsibility to head this institution here. Uh, at the same time, we're training other doctors right now to to work with him and and continue the tradition of the of the surgeries from Florida here. So we will bring around four uh, neurosurgeons. Uh, to the institute here, and we will bring also anesthesiologists and, and uh, general practitioners so we can serve uh, the, the patients completely. We need to, we're looking to also open a radiological department so we can have a three dimensional uh, uh, CAT scanner and also a, a, an MRI that can coordinate with the three dimensional CAT scanner to have three-dimensional um, MRI vision. Um, the, the, the communication between the facilities will be done through the internet and through the satellite. So any type of a situation that there is a conflict or a situation that needs consultation in the middle of the surgery, I will be able to see it from Florida. And... Uh, the instrumentation will have some type of a uh, bird view that will allow us through the scope to look exactly the the area that's being operated in vivo right there. That's cutting edge. So with that, in case that they 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 feel, for example, imagine that we have a patient. Remember that our procedure is with a patient practically with a um, conscious sedation. Mm -hmm. So the patient communicates with you, understand what's happening. He's not, doesn't have pain, but is awake. So if you touch a nerve, the patient will feel. And if you touch the nerve and you run slowly on that nerve, you can localize exactly where the pain that the patient is suffering will be present. So when you do that and you touch that area, the patient will say, that's exactly my pain. So then you can lift the nerve a little bit and look around to see why that area is being injured or is being affected. And if that happens, then sometimes it runs very easy and very, very fast. Some other times you just kind of find the area. So in those circumstances, they are going to communicate with me, and I will guide them to see, look here, or look at the other one, do this, or do that, so we can we can pinpoint exactly and solve the problems for the patients. Yeah, so you jumped a little bit ahead, and I like that. So I wanted to, we're, we're now into the, the why of the procedure, and uh, yeah. the conscious IV sedation is something that's unique. The patient's there, they're awake, they're collaborating with you, telling you where it hurts, how it hurts, and uh, well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, let me tell you, this, this was a real fight. Um, 
When you develop something, when you are a pioneer on anything in the world, you always have two forces. You have the you trying to impose your opinion and your and your techniques, and you have the opposite the uh, the opposition that is the force that is working with a different procedure for years. Mm -hmm. They are being trained at the universities. They live with that procedure. They create their constituency with uh, and educate their, their their surgeons with that procedure. So it's a big fight. The move that 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 wall farther is a tremendous fight. So usually, what happens is takes around twenty years to move that wall. And why you move the wall is not because you do something different is because the individuals that they are supporting the other wall, they start to disappear. Uh, they start to die or they start to change uh, concepts or they become more accepted the idea of the change and that moves the wall. At the same time, the, what really moves the wall is the patient. When the patient said, you're not going to cut me six inches, I want one inch incision, then these, uh, these other groups start to lose patients. When they start to lose patients, they reorganize. They reorganize, they start to look at the techniques, and then they start to accept the technique. But take 20 years to do that. So I have 20 years of horrendous fights to move this technique to the situation that is today. If you look at the internet uh, 10 years ago, you would not see arthroscopic spine or minimally invasive spine surgeons uh, on the internet. But if you look today, you have hundreds and hundreds of surgeons that they are talking about minimally invasive surgery. That's when the technique is smooth. Now, when you look at this technique, you also need to distinguish the technique because you have open surgery that requires instrumentation that requires screws and plates and devices that they, they do fusions and things like that. We don't believe on that. That to us is tools that they, they should be on the box of tools. In the toolbox rather than okay. in the body? Exactly. <laughs> so we believe that we need to, the concept that we have is a decompression of the nerve. If you free the nerve, the nerve is going to perform normal. So the idea is to free the nerve and remove any type of an insult that can affect that nerve to give you the symptomatology that you're suffering with. So that is the whole concept. But the results with that concept are fantastic. But recently, because of the training, this technique is not really at the level of, of, of exposure in the, in the country yet. We are still far, far away from, from the knowledge of this technique for the, uh, available to the surgeons. So they are an other type of an idea. This other idea was to do the same open procedure with a small incision, and they call minimally invasive. This is not what we do. Mm -hmm. When you talk about minimally invasive and they talk about fusions and put devices in you and put the screws in you and the whole thing, that's not our procedure. Our procedure is a patent procedure. It's a procedure that we developed. And at that time, on the 1990s, physicians were able to patent the knowledge of a new procedure or a new tool. And... When you patent a procedure, uh, then you own that procedure. But when you patent a tool, you own that tool. But with the new law, you cannot patent a procedure. So the mental component of a new advance in medicine legally was removed by the, by the legislators, and they, they said doctors cannot patent procedures. So there are not more patent procedures in the country, but they are patent tools. So the industry move with lobbying, remove the doctors from patent procedures and tools to be able to get themselves 
the tools and produce the tools and patent the tools for themselves, and they left the doctors out. So the doctors participate today with the industry, given the idea, but they don't, they don't really own the product. Sure. Well, before we were able to own the product, and that is the blessing that we have. We own the, par- the product. So nobody can imitate or nobody can touch what we do unless are being trained by us or unless it's part of a system where we educate them. And that's what we try to do here in Las Vegas, educate with our techniques exactly what we do that is not what they call minimal invasive today, neither what they call open surgery today. So I think you just touched on the why and why so many patients travel from all around the world to get the Bonatti targeted uh, procedure. So I, I want to c- come back to the event because we had a couple other uh, things that we wanted to talk about the event. 200 people, we had nothing but compliments about the great food that was uh, provided at the event from the good folks over at the Americana restaurant. Uh, we've got Chef uh, Steve in there. Uh, Stephen came over from Charlie Palmer and this is a brand new restaurant up at uh, Desert Shores, and they did an utterly amazing job. These folks, uh, God, the food that they put out, I heard nothing but great compliments. And then we had another, uh, we had a, 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 an entertainer there last night by the name of Dirk. Uh, and Dirk is a German-born guitarist and uh, trained in L.A., came up here to uh, Las Vegas, and everybody seemed to enjoy the music that he played, especially my wife. Uh, who was German-born as well, and uh, she enjoyed the conversation that she's able to have with Dirk. They uh, grew up a couple hours from each other uh, uh, over in Germany outside of Cologne, but uh, it was a great event last night, and uh, I-, I think we should probably close it up here because we're coming to the the, the top of the hour, and uh, Scott, if you could throw up the last shot of the ribbon cutting one last time, and uh, Dr. Panati, I want to uh, thank you for being on the show. I want to welcome you to Las Vegas, and uh, we wish you the highest level of success, and we thank you for uh, coming out here, and thank you again for being on the show. Thank you again for bringing me over. Yes.